Welcome to another episode of the Tech Transfer Podcast. I'm here with Dr. John Cox, one of our BYU inventors who invented the CBT card game. Uh, John, do you want to tell us what the card game is? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the, co- the Cosmic Battle Training CBT card game, uh, it's uh, a card game that I invented to try and help people learn about the concepts and skills of uh, um, CBT, um, cognitive behavioral therapy. And uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's meant to be fun and enjoyable itself, hopefully, but also to uh, help children, adolescents, even young adults, to uh, learn the concepts of CBT so that they can apply those in their life. Okay, and I think cognitive mm-hmm. behavioral therapy has become pretty mainstream, but just kind of in a nutshell, what is that type of approach to therapy? Okay, so cognitive behavioral therapy is actually one of the, um, one of the most common types of therapy in, in the world right now. And cognitive behavioral therapy has been around for decades. And uh, the basic gist of cognitive behavioral therapy is that a lot of our uh, difficulties, emotional difficulties and mental health struggles are caused by a combination of how we think and how we act. And uh, of course it's complex and everything, but, uh, but some of the main ways that we can begin to work on and overcome mental health difficulties and emotional difficulties are by changing the way we think and the way we act. And so the technical term is cognition for thinking and of course behavior for our actions. And so cognitive behavioral therapy is all about working on ways to change the way we think and the way we act to help us be more healthy, uh, especially with mental health. Okay, and that must be particularly challenging to teach to children. So you have the card game, and maybe, if I understand, say there's a 12-year-old, maybe someone says something mean to them at school, so they come home and they say, I'm never going to school again, everything's ruined. And so you play the card game and it might say, oh, you're catastrophizing, you need to keep things in perspective. Is that yeah, possible? Yeah, great, great summary. There's mm-hmm. uh, all, all people, engage in what's called cognitive heuristics. Mm -hmm. And cognitive heuristics are when our brains create shortcuts to try and think more efficiently and more quickly. Mm -hmm. And everyone does this, but if we rely on them too much, sometimes they can cause us problems. And some of those cognitive heuristics have been shown to contribute to mental health struggles. And so some people have heard of things called cognitive errors or thinking errors, or there's a few different phrases used for those same things. You just brought one up, which was catastrophizing, right? There's a a list of like 10 or 11 common cognitive errors or thinking errors that people engage in. And the, the cosmic battle training CBT card game Uh, conceptualizes those types of things, the cognitive errors and some other ways of thinking and acting that cause us problems as uh, attacks from an enemy. And then uh, the the common CBT uh, concepts and skills that address those to treat them are, uh, are conceptualized as ways to defend against those attacks. And it's, it's set in a, it's like a space battle uh, for the, the card game, but you have, uh, you know, an enemy that is attacking you, and then you play these defensive cards, and at the bottom of the cards are explanations of each of the CBT concepts for each of the different cards. So essentially, kids playing the game are going to have to learn those concepts to win the game. The game is engaging enough that they'll want to play it. and and uh, learn those, right? Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. So uh, as a therapist, um, about 15 years ago, I was working uh, with children and adolescents and families uh, in an outpatient clinic, and uh, I was looking around for ways to, uh, different games that I could play with them that uh, would be therapeutic and helpful for them. And I wasn't finding any therapy games that I thought were like actually something that I wanted to play. Mm-hmm. None of them looked interesting to me. None of them looked like something that I thought children would want to play. And so I, that, that kind of started me thinking, uh, what would it look like? What, what's my idea of something that um, children and adolescents would like to play that would also be able to help them learn some of these therapy skills and concepts? And, and that, that was kind of the, 
the or original thought that led to me starting to brainstorm how I would make it and eventually decided that this might be a, a viable thing to mm -hmm. create a therapy card game. Okay, and at this point, hundreds of people have bought the game, but prior to creating this, what, what is the standard therapy for a child to teach them CBT? Like, how would a counselor do that normally? So normally for CBT, a counselor would uh, bring the child into the room and begin to chat with them. And uh, oftentimes, so there's a few different types of what's called play therapy. And, uh, and a CBT counselor or therapist is going to just engage with a, a client in whatever type of play that client wants to do while they're also engaging in talking with them about what's going on in their life and start to try and teach them and communicate to them, uh, helping them identify what the CBT concepts and skills are. So like as they're talking, they might identify when the kid was catastrophizing about someone calling them names, right? Mm -hmm. and, and helping the child to identify those things uh, uh, hopefully they'll learn that through their interactions in therapy so that they can begin generalizing that out into their life. Mm -hmm. um, the idea with my card game is I wanted it to be something that kids could and would want to play even outside the therapy room so that as they're playing it at home repeatedly they're starting to learn those concepts and learn which defenses are used against which attacks so that they can start identifying which therapy CBT skills are used against which symptoms, used to treat which symptoms. Mm -hmm. If they can learn all of that at home, then in the therapy room, the therapist can work more on application and uh, advanced skills rather mm -hmm. than just trying to teach them the original concepts. Okay, well in that, in that psychological bestseller, uh, Coddling of the American Mind, great book. It, it kind of makes the argument that CBT is what we all need a little bit. So you could have someone who maybe doesn't need therapy, doesn't r rise to that level, but would still benefit from learning these principles, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we all engage in these cognitive heuristics to some extent or another. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they cause, us pro they cause us problems. It might not be to the level of a mental health disorder or something like mm -hmm. that. We may not all need therapy, but we can all learn to think more clearly and, and cope more effectively with these thinking errors. Okay, so imagine that I think, okay, my kids can benefit from this in some way. So I go on Amazon and order a, a set of, a deck of cards. How does the gameplay work? Or can we look at the cards a little bit? Absolutely, yeah. So a deck of cards comes just like this. It's got you know some wrapping on it. You get it from Amazon. And uh, once you open it up, if I can open it up here, Oh, and I should do a little disclaimer. This is for sale on Amazon, and obviously BYU and Dr. Cox have launched this product, so there is some kind of financial interest in there, full interest of disclosure. So. Okay, so it comes with a, an instruction sheet that describes the gameplay. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna describe that here briefly, uh, but the details are there in the instructions sheet. Also, it has my email address, so <laughs> if you have any problems with it, I'm happy to talk with you about the gameplay. Okay. Uh, it also comes with, um, so a, n a number of attack cards. These are the attack cards, they're the ones with the, the red and white target in the upper right hand corner there. And the attack cards, like I said, represent the different um, thinking errors and other problems that uh, show up with uh, mental health difficulties. Uh, for example, here's an uh, abusive message. And uh, it says, the enemy contacts you on screen and its threats impede the effectiveness of your staff. And uh, the CBT concept for this is labeling and name calling. So you call yourself names and put yourself down. Hmm. That's like if a kid does... Uh, um, you know, doesn't do well on a test and is, is saying, oh, I'm so stupid, right? Like that's, that's labeling and name calling and engaging in that type of behavior, that, that type of thinking and uh, talking can cause us problems if we're not careful about that. So, mm -hmm. so this card represents that, that behavior. I don't know if you can see this, but the art on these is really good. And this was a BYU student illustrator, right? Yeah, we hired a BYU student who was an illustration student, Ivy Rich. And mm -hmm. she did a fabulous job. It was so amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked 
uh, Ivy and I worked really closely together. Uh, every card, we have uh, over 60 cards. Every card has a different illustration on it. So she did so much work, uh, all kind of bringing my vision to fruition. And it was really amazing. Yeah, and they're very professional, but also appeal to kids, I think. Like, it, it is a fun looking game as well. That was my hope, for yeah. sure, yeah. So we've got the, the um, attack cards. And then we have a lot of defense cards. And the defense cards have this green and black shield in the top. Mm -hmm. And the defense cards are, like I, like I described, the different, um, different ways that we address the difficulties. So, for example, here's active dampeners, the first one on the top. Uh, powered by motors and a, computer, and a computer, these dampeners actively analyze the vibrations experienced and counteract them. Remember, this is like set in a space battle, right? Yeah, yeah. So, that, so this ship has some dampeners that keep it from shaking okay. apart, right? Okay, sure. Well, the CBD concept is opposite emotion. Do something that creates the opposite emotion from what you're feeling. If you're feeling really sad and down, mm -hmm. part of what you can do is go do something else, right? Yeah. Watch something that's funny or go play a game with a friend or something like that. Does every defense card work against every... Uh, negative card or do you have to match them up right? Great question. So there's two ways of defending. Mm -hmm. One way of defending is you can use one or more defense cards uh, against any of the attack cards and the defense cards, uh, the attack cards show you the uh, attack points up top mm -hmm. and the defense cards show you the defense cards in the same place up top. And you can use any, uh, any defense card more than one defense card against attack cards. Okay. Uh, however, oftentimes the attacks have more points than the defense. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to use often multiple defense cards against one attack. However, each attack card has at least one defense card, sometimes more, that just automatically cancels it out. Okay. So the, what I was hoping to communicate through this mm -hmm. uh, and teach the children is that there are some skills that we learn about in therapy that are more effective against certain symptoms, mm -hmm. right? And so that's I planned that all out so that uh, all of the attack card, all of the attack cards have the specific CBT skills that are most effective for them, as mm -hmm. the defenses that counter those, that that automatically cancel those out. Okay, okay, makes a lot of sense. And then how do you how do you win the game? You're playing against someone. Okay, so yeah. uh, you can play in two, three, four people, and everyone's playing attacks on each other. And then uh, in the next um, phase, there's a couple of phases to a round. In the first phase, you attack each other. The next phase, you're defending against the attacks that were put on you. Yeah. And, uh, and the way you win the game is two different ways. One way is the last person who still has personal defense points. So the attacks, yeah. if the attacks aren't fully defended, they take away some points from your personal defense points. And the, the last person to have personal defense points is still alive and, and wins the game. And are you tallying these points on a paper as you go? You can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can do or it however you want, you want to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other way of winning is if uh, at the end of a, a full round, uh, mm -hmm. If anyone has 3,000 uh, defense points active on the table uh, mm -hmm. and they have more defense points than anyone else, over 3,000 and more than anyone else, then they win the game. Okay. All right. Well, great. And I'm trying to pull up another character card. Just I don't know if we'll be zoomed in enough just so people can see. It's kind of – they look really good, so – Good job, good job to Ivy drawing those. Yeah, right? she did so. a wonderful job. Well, great. There's so, also some modifier cards, and these uh -huh. modifier cards are um, different ways, different things that we can do in our life, just in general, to live a life conducive to better mental health. So mm -hmm. we've got things like, well, here's metal, and uh, earning a medal uh, in in this one is analogous to like having insight into your thoughts and feelings and okay. what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. Or here's refueling. Refueling is all about good nutrition. It's mm -hmm. helpful to fuel yourself, right? Um, here's repair. Repair is all about good sleep. 
If you get mm -hmm. good sleep, you're going to be better able to defend against the mental health stuff. And so these are extra cards that aren't like specific defenses against anything, but they are really helpful just in general. And oftentimes they, they bolster your defenses in general. All right, so I'm looking at these defense cards, and there are all these principles that people can learn. So the uh, let's take just like a few of them and see what they are. So this one says actuarial. What does that one do for us? Oh, I love actuarial. This is one of my favorite skills that I talk with almost every client about in therapy. So the card itself says you have a staff member whose job it is to tell you by looking at the statistics if something is really a danger or not, right? Like we're looking at these potential attacks from the, the uh, enemy and whether like statistically speaking, this is likely to be a problem or not. Well, uh, the CBT concept is calculate the chances or probability of something bad actually happening. And why this is helpful is because Oftentimes when someone is worried or anxious about something, we engage in, you mentioned catastrophizing. We engage in this catastrophizing where our anxiety predicts the worst thing possible that could happen. And when that happens, we engage in some emotional reasoning where we believe that that is more likely to happen than it actually is. And so one of the skills that can be helpful is if we step back and we look at the actual facts and probabilities of those things happening. For example, um, uh, like the fear of flying right. is uh, an example that I like to use for this because uh, many people are afraid of flying. And like there are reasons for that, right? We hear on the news of terrible things happening to airplanes. But when we look at the statistics, the chance of being injured or killed flying is so much lower than the chance of being injured or killed, say, driving on the freeway, or uh, I don't know. I mean, I haven't looked at walking on the sidewalk, but it could even yeah, be probably. lower than walking on the sidewalk, right? Yeah. It's just so small that, uh, that looking at the chances or probability using your actuarial, right? Mm -hmm. Calculating that out is a way to help you begin to trust your logic and not trust the emotional reasoning. Mm -hmm. Now, it may or may not bring down the anxiety, but whether it does or not, whether it brings down the anxiety in the moment or not, what's gonna help you with your anxiety is by moving forward and doing that thing you're afraid of, even if you're afraid of doing it. Mm -hmm. So you have to trust your logic, trust the probability that nothing bad is gonna happen. And if you do that over and over again, your brain eventually learns that that thing isn't a danger and you don't react with that same anxiety anymore to that thing. Mm -hmm. So this card represents all of that. And I can see, you know, people who don't have kids might wonder, well, is a 12 year old really gonna apply that principle? But absolutely, my son's 13. There've been so many times when he's kind of reasoned his way through something like that. So, yep, yep, great. Yeah, no, uh, I just finished up a uh, certification in OCD treatment, okay. and it was for children and adolescents. These are the concepts that we talk with children and adolescents about to treat OCD, which is a type of anxiety, right? And absolutely it works, and uh, children do it all the time. Okay, fantastic. All right, let's do another one. This one is advisor. What's that doing? Okay, advisor. So this, uh, the, the card itself says you call another captain to discuss the situation. Uh, makes sense, right? Like you want an advisor. The CBT concept, of course, is think about what you would tell a friend if they were in the same situation. So oftentimes we get really down on ourselves. We get upset about a situation uh, and we're feeling really bad about it. But if we think about if a friend came and talked to us about the same type of situation, we would respond very differently to them than we would to ourselves. In fact, we would respond in a really compassionate, loving, supportive, helpful way. And so using advisor, the hope is that the client, the kid, can learn to talk to themselves the way that they would talk to a friend about that situation. Oh, that's fantastic. That totally work. Okay, let's do one more. I'll flip into the middle of the deck for here, for this. Okay, I've got interpreter. All right. So, <laughs> interpreter is great. Uh, this one's a, a specialty skill. 
Okay. Okay. So this says that it counters abusive message. And abusive message, we, we found we talked about that earlier, right? Abusive message is name calling. When you are name calling yourself, when you're getting down on yourself and, and name calling, one of the skills that you can use to combat that is the CBT concept here is define the meaning of the negative labels. Be specific. And what that, what that means is sometimes we use some pretty harsh terms, but if we can, like towards ourselves, but if we can like actually get in and look at the dictionary definition of those terms, we can see that that actually doesn't apply to us, right? Like, yeah. like if I call myself an idiot, that's a rude, harsh term, but what's the actual definition of an idiot? The actual yeah, it's like a low IQ yeah, measurement, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, the the origin of it was back in like the 30s or 40s, something like that. They used that term to refer to people who were like 70 IQ or something like that, really low IQ. It, it's not it's not appropriate to use that term anymore for for that or any other reason. But looking at that specific thing, clearly you and I are not 70 <laughs> IQ. Right. Yeah. And so like that has no meaning when we look at the actual definition so of it. So you can tell yourself I'm feeling down and hey, maybe I messed up on something, but clearly that's factually not true. Not you got it. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. And most of the cards that you know, they're pretty pithy, pretty straight to the point. So the principle is taught in one sentence essentially every time, right? That yes. So pretty straightforward for someone playing it. Um, okay, great. Well, how do you, um, how would this work? Say you were using it in therapy. So people could just play this game at home, and we know people do that. But if you were using it in therapy, what would you do? You yeah, what I, what I imagined uh -huh. uh, is that uh, a therapist would sit down with the kid and deal out the cards, right? You deal out five cards to each person, and then you have the draw deck and a place for discard. And then... Um, you just go about playing the game, and, and the game is played in two rounds uh, per, t per, sorry, two, two phases per round. Mm -hmm. And in the first phase, you're planning out your attacks and playing attack cards, and then in the second phase, you're defending against those attacks. And uh, so any card that's played, if the therapist wants to, you can uh, add the second element to the game, the kind of the second level, which is every card that's played if you want to increase your attack or decrease or increase your defense, you can name, you can describe a situation in your life that fits that specific, that's an, uh, like a specific example in your life of that, that concept or that idea. And if you can name that, then that adds to your defense or uh, like, Let's say that someone plays an attack on me. If when I'm going to defend against that, I can name something in my life that fits that attack, mm -hmm. and then I name something that fits my defense, then I get a couple of hundred points taken off the attack. So it's, it's more defense there. Okay. So the therapist, uh, we're working on like specific real life application of the concepts and skills. That's terrific. And you've had to, you've essentially done that in creating the game as well. You're taking these abstract things. It's like what we do with inventions here at Tech Transfer, trying to make them concrete like this. Yep. And, and you really did that. So what did you learn from that process? Uh, it's really complex. Yeah. It, it took a long time uh, of me like writing down uh, all and you know all the things I've learned in th uh, in my training about mm -hmm. therapy and you know researching all the reading I did about CBT, writing all that stuff down and really mapping it together. Uh, I have a whole spreadsheet of mm -hmm. all the different attacks and all the different defenses, and yeah. you know, like I I mapped onto there each one, which ones are going to cancel each other out. It's just it's really complex, and uh, uh, as a therapist, like teaching someone all these things could take a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Like all of these concepts. Uh, like I'd rather as a therapist get to like real life application in my sessions than spend time like in a classroom teaching them about yeah. the concepts. And, and so my hope with the game is that it simplifies that process so that kids can learn the concepts on their own 
so that the therapist can focus more on like the actual application and digging into their real life experience. Mm -hmm. and, and creating a good game is all about user design, right? Because you're thinking, how is this going to play out? Like, what are people going to do? Uh, do you feel like your, your experience as a therapist, like you've talked to a lot of people about how they think, did that help you with the game design? Um, I think so. What I tried to do is think about uh, my experience with children and adolescents and what I thought they would find interesting and enjoyable. And, uh, you know, I've, I've played some games myself. So, like, I ab absolutely thought about what I would find interesting and enjoyable. And so, like, thinking about those uh, different things, I tried to incorporate them into the gameplay. Okay. And if someone, if someone picks up a deck of cards and, and tries playing the uh, Cosmic Battles training, what, um, what's your advice for them? Like, how do you get started doing it? Uh, I would say first advice is um, don't try and get too detailed right off the bat. Just, like, play a basic game without trying to read every single thing uh, and, and get used to the gameplay a little bit. And then as you're used to the gameplay, then you can start reading the details. Because some of the cards have some special abilities to them, some kind of fine print to them that gives you extra little things here and there. Uh, and like you can play the game without those things. But I think that those things make it a little more interesting. And, and so like I'd say just kind of play a basic game first. And then as you get used to it, then you can start reading the details and then start reading the CBT concepts and kind of ease into it like that. The CBT mm -hmm. concepts, I think, will be easier to learn once the gameplay is pretty smooth, once you're oriented to it. And so don't try and jump right into the CBT aspect of it immediately. Okay. That's great. And if people are looking for the game, where do they find it? It's on Amazon. You just, uh, just search for Cosmic Battle Training Card Game and it'll come right up. Okay, and do you mind telling us, I, I've been through the history of developing the game and everything, John, mm -hmm. but um, just start to finish, like how did we make this commercially available for people? Okay, great. So uh, this was a long process for me, yeah. right? I told you it was 15 years ago that I came up with the idea, and I worked on it uh, for many years just in my head and on paper and coming up with the ideas, and, and I had kind of a... Uh, a prototype on you know like three by five cards with with yeah. like uh, things pasted on it and written on them and that type of stuff. I definitely saw it pre-illustration, so yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I uh, I thought you know this is an uh, I'm going to need help with this. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a business person. I don't know how to go about this. And so I contacted the technology transfer office. And, uh, and you were amazing at just like, first of all, seeing the possibility and, and being willing to think about it. And then also just all the support and knowledge that you contributed, uh, not to mention uh, like financial assistance to kind of starter money to mm -hmm. get it like some sample decks printed and that type of stuff and so like all along the way the technology transfer office just like supported everything that I needed to do and was there to answer questions and give ideas and like tell me what to look out for when I'm thinking about Amazon and yeah. <laughs> All of those things, like I super appreciate the the help and support you and your office gave. Well, thanks, John. It's been so fun. You um, so it was kind of uh, 2019 ish or so that we were getting serious about commercializing, mm -hmm. and we did shop around the deck to some some publishing companies. You could see maybe a medical. There are companies that make medical games and mm -hmm. things, not not on the same subject. Maybe they would be interested. We shopped it around a bit, but then it kind of became the pandemic, and it was hard to do that. And so ultimately, like you alluded to, we decided, look, we can make this available to people. And BYU genuinely wants to get inventions out there where they help people. That's We're trying to move from academic publication to things that actually impact people. So like you say, we we got it printed, uh, manufacturer in China, and got someone else to set up, up on Amazon, and that's where it's for sale. And, and it's going great. And that's people who want it can find it, and that's fantastic. Yeah, we've uh, sold over a 1,000 decks. Yeah. So that's, like, super cool. Right. So the card deck is out in people's hands. It's actually affecting real people. Have you received any feedback or heard stories from people actually playing it? Uh, a bit, yeah. So I have um, some friends that I play games with periodically 
And uh, I tested it out with them before we really moved towards commercialization and got some feedback from them and, and refined it based upon their feedback. And we had a good time playing it with them. And then I gave it to some other friends who uh, kind of test out other people's games and they played it and they gave me a little bit of feedback same kind of process they said they had a good time with it um, uh, the feedback that matters most to me though mm -hmm. is that when I first brought home the 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 printed card deck my son who was like uh, seven at the time mm -hmm. was just over the moon he was so in love he wanted to play it every day he was so enamored with the cards he thought it was just like the most amazing thing that he had ever seen and that 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 was just super um uh, meaningful and validating to me that, that he would be that interested in it uh there's some um reviews on amazon of like random people who bought it that mm -hmm. uh like I couldn't have written a better review if I had uh, yeah. decided to write it myself. So that's great. And you got some positive media attention. You're on KSL TV. I remember mm -hmm. so, some other articles and interviews. But what was that like? Yeah, that was really uh, fun and interesting. Kind of a 15 minutes of fame sort of experience. Sure. Uh, but um, the, the the media attention was. Uh, was gratifying but also it got the word out and really like so many people were interested in it from there that mm -hmm. it was amazing to see how it took off that's great and so there are other faculty members people who aren't working at a university who could create something like this and don't if someone has just a concept like this what what advice would you give them having gone through it be patient yeah. <laughs> it takes time uh, and if you have people like you in the technology transfer office that you can like get advice from and get support and help from it's super helpful um and it's a process you just have to kind of slug through that process and and uh keep going but it, it's fun it's an interesting experience for sure good and definitely possible and when you talk about an entrepreneur people always think about starting up a company and raising money from venture capitalists and doing this very traditional thing but this is an entrepreneurial project like if you have something you want to do you can you can kind of set that in motion and create the thing so yeah and it did not take that much seed money from right from the tech transfer office right like this yeah. this was something that uh like i didn't have that money to put into it mm -hmm. but because you were willing to invest a little bit into it. Uh, we were able to uh, get it going, and and we got that back and more. So yeah, and like so many things we do, uh, we were we were lean. You know, we did what it took to launch the product. It's all our costs have been reimbursed and then some. So yeah. uh, not a concern at all. Our main thing now is just getting the deck out where people can use it and benefit from it. Yeah. Well, John, thanks. This has been super interesting. I uh, love learning about the CPT principles and this card game is such a great way to do it. The CPT deck is out there on Amazon. People can find it easily. Uh, thanks for creating it. This has been really fun and for coming and talking about it today. Dave, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been a great, great opportunity. Just working with you over the past, what, like six or seven yeah. years now. It's been awesome. Yep. Thank been you. Well, thanks, John. And we'll be back with another episode.